Hi, everybody, and welcome back to season two of the Sticks and Bones podcast with your ghost hosts, Chelsea and Ten. We are back. We are so excited. We have been waiting a whole month to do our podcast again. So welcome back, Ten. How are you? I'm good. I mean, I've seen you for quite some time recently, oh, yeah. but you guys, when I tell you I have been itching to come back to the podcast. It's been crazy. Like I want to be doing this 24 seven all the time. And we are recently new to YouTube. So welcome to those of you that found us on YouTube. Welcome back to our podcast listeners. If you're watching us on YouTube, we're Mm -hmm. here in 4k in video. Um, so we're really excited to be part of the YouTube community and we look forward to posting here more. Um, if you just found us via YouTube or maybe you're new to the podcast, I highly suggest going back and listening to some of the first few episodes, um, probably episodes one and two, um, because Ted and I are going to be kind of reintroducing ourselves again, because our first episode that we ever did. Who are they? I, we so were scared. taking like leaves on yeah. a tree on a blustery fall day. Like we were, we finished working and then we were like okay like let's do this together because if we do this apart I'm gonna have a panic attack I think Um, I did have a panic attack (laughs) it was scary we were at my kitchen island doing it and who you hear the shakiness in our voices who are those girls and we are not the same people we were last year when we filmed um I feel like we're a lot more confident in you know, our path and like what we're talking about. And we talk about a lot of taboo things here. We are deaf girls. We are here to study death in the modern sense, in the ancient sense. We're also professional evidential psychic mediums. We can see and hear spirits on the spiritual plane, hence the title, I see dead people. Um, We're going to go into our introductions in a minute. So for those of you that have been with us for a while, please bear with us as we reintroduce ourselves back to the podcast. But you know, it's 2023 and it's okay to change. It's okay to be, find yourself. It's okay to be somewhere different. So, um, we're really excited, but we do talk about really taboo topics here. That's the whole point. Oh, absolutely. So buckle up. We're hopping aboard the river sticks, toss the coin to your ferryman. And really, I'm so excited. I mean, those of you who have been with us for a whole freaking season, like shout outs to you, but you know, <laughs> going back to the first episode, like we were two completely different practitioners, two completely different people. Um, and just going through different stuff in our lives. I mean, shit, I had blonde ass hair. You, you did. <laughs> you did. I had like almost Daenerys Targaryen white hair, but you know, I'm, I'm back in my own roots. Chelsea went through a stunning pink hair phase. I went through a stint of pink hair. I really was trying to find myself. <laughs> I loved it. I, I want you to bring it back occasionally because it, it was like a different side of you that I love. I loved it too. And I was saying this on my live today on TikTok. A lot of people were like, oh my God, you're back blonde. Um, I liked the pink for a second, but I just didn't feel like it was really me. I really missed my blonde hair. Yeah. Um, so I, I cut all my hair off. I dyed it pink. I went through like a really you know, transformational period, um, in 2022. And then it's like, I kind of came back to my original roots of my blonde hair. So we're coming full circle. Um, hair holds a lot of spiritual energy that you can find that across culture. We talked about that on, on our um, season one podcast, when we both randomly decided to dye our hair and we were like, Oh my God, I'm also dying my hair. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we literally- go through a little change, but Hey, it's the new year. And if you feel compelled to cut and dye your hair, do it do it honestly it's so freeing so liberating like um I know a few of my friends have actually like shaved their heads before and like I wish I had the confidence for that because I would just love to try it um Mm -hmm. but I I don't have the confidence so maybe maybe one year I will um just to try it out or do like a cool like undercut design oh that would be awesome I feel like that'd be cool on you but it's really like artistic it is. Shall we reintroduce ourselves to season oh. three Sticks and Bones? I mean, ghost host. Who are you? Who are you? Um, okay, so if you're new and for those of you that have been with us, my name is Chelsea. I am a professional evidential psychic medium. Um, 
I also can see and hear spirits on the spiritual plane. I am a devotee to the Catholic underworld. So I study um, death from a Greco-Roman perspective, as well as my own from being a psychic medium. So I really like to understand um, different belief systems. Um, everyone believes differently about death, which I think makes it so beautiful. Um, I am a death witch. So I do practice in the realm of death witchcraft. Um, I'm a metaphysical store owner. I do create and spell products. What am I missing? Oh, I'm also a paranormal researcher. I am very into communicating with spirits, um, understanding the paranormal, understanding spirits that are still here and helping other people understand that as well. Not everything is, you know, evil and trying to kill you. So I do like to bring um, some research to that area. And I look forward to doing more paranormal investigations this year. Um, I did one in Gettysburg that I posted on Patreon, which I actually might share on this channel. I'm thinking um, as like a little bonus, you know, I love that I did do an investigation. So it's something I'm looking forward to diving more into this year, but I just love to help people understand death because I can communicate with it so clearly. So that is me. Um, I developed my gifts around 24, 25. So I was an older adult in life, which was terrifying. I was not able to do this when I was younger. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to direct you actually back to season one, episode one, I see dead people, the original one, oh, um, the OG episode where Ten and I really talk about like our villain origin story of how we kind of came into these gifts, grew into the practitioners we are today. Um, that's really where I talk about it more. But if you are an older adult and later on in life that developed gifts, I I, I understand it was terrifying. And mm -hmm. it's like, how am I 24 and now becoming a psychic medium? It's so weird. So <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it for a few years now. I'm now 30. So I've really honed in on that. Um, but yeah, I did love sharing my story in our first episode. So highly recommend. I love that and would second recommend to go listen to that because I love how different our stories are because yeah. it does showcase, you know, a, a true spectrum of it can happen to you at whatever time, if it's meant to be. Yep. And you know, it, not everything happens as a child. Not everything happens, you know, teenager 20. Sometimes it could happen in your later adult life in 40s or 50s, you know? So don't count it yourself out. Can. So it definitely can. And when I was researching that, um, because I didn't really know what to do. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I tell like how I told my parents in the first episode, which was crazy. I, I was like so traumatized by it. I can laugh about it now, but at the time I was like, I was, there's like some psychic school in Europe that I was about to send my ass to. I'm like, how, like, where yeah. are you supposed to go to understand these gifts at 24? And I know Ten's going to go into her story. She was two. So it's like a two-year-old and a 24-year-old. It's like, we still have the same problem. How, what are you supposed to do with these gifts? Like, what, what do? <laughs> what are we supposed to do here? So um, for those of you that are professional psychic mediums or any other spiritualists or those that can communicate with the other side, you can understand what I'm talking about here. It's, it's a scary thing. So truly really what do <laughs> yes but 10 let's reintroduce you because yeah um my name is 10 um that is what I go by um just like the number it is the shortened version of my name and it saves countless years and shortens the war so just go by 10 or really any number truly um but I am a archaeologist and an art historian um, I'm currently a PhD candidate so I am hopefully fingers crossed going to be Dr. 10 uh this year um so super exciting um I do have my master's in ancient art archaeology and I really pair you know magic mystery and mythology with the history and archaeology behind it all because you know a lot of the occult studies and a lot of you know studies in magic and everything and the macabre come from ancient times and it's truly just been a fascinating journey um, I knew what I wanted to do when I was two. Um, I didn't know that there was a word for, you know, being in cemeteries or, you know, uncovering history and digging in the dirt. But by the time I was 12, I knew I wanted to put my nose to the books and dive into the realm of history, mythology, and archaeology. So I specialize in the Aegean Bronze Age, but I focus primarily on weaponry and combat iconography and how with metals trade, how these ancient peoples are actually so interconnected with one another. And while artwork is being traded, so are belief systems, which, which 
it's mind blowing. And looking back at history and, you know, comparing it to today, it truly, we are not that different. Like no. it's incredible. So I love doing that. And I love finding the comparisons and finding the old ways and bringing it to modern times. I adore that. But, you know, as a child, I was able to see spirits of deceased individuals too. And to me, that scared me so much because you're a child and, you know, a lot of things could be construed as nightmares or anything like that. But I was knowing things that a two-year-old shouldn't know. Mm -hmm. I was asking questions that a two-year-old shouldn't ask about death. And I was actually wanting my parents to take me consistently to cemeteries to learn about these individuals and to learn more about them because I was hearing things from them. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I ever formally came out to my parents in that sense. I think along the lines, they were just like, okay, loves skeletons, um, wants to be in cemeteries, loves history and archaeology, becomes an archaeologist can see things. Hmm. Mm. And I think they just put it together. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, one, that's terrifying uh, as a child. Yeah. You do hear those stories a lot or uh, like children, I do believe most of them are sensitive and can see. And Absolutely. Spirit. Absolutely. I, I personally believe it's a gift that we lose, especially if you have it at a mm -hmm. young age or you kind of push it into the back of your mind because of um, how traumatizing it is. So I think that we're a really good blend because you're coming at it because you've had this gift your whole life and I'm coming at it. I've developed it at 24, 25. You also are coming at things, you know, with archeology span and history. Mm -hmm. And we believe like there's a huge blend between, I mean, there is a blend between both and absolutely. It's not that taboo because ancient people were doing it. So we really are going to be focusing a lot on necromancy, talking about the Catholic underworld on our podcast mm -hmm. this season, um, really blending spirituality, history, and archaeology together because you need all of those to understand, especially if you're looking how ancients used to practice, even Christianity. It's like you really need to go back and look at history and what was going on back then. So um, I was just going to say that. Um it's like bringing in Christianity. It's like, yeah. sick. <laughs> um, but you know, the classes that I do teach in ancient art is really focused on, you know, when three massive religions were together in the Roman empire, that being pagan Roman, um, the people of the Jewish faith and early Christianity. And with that, it's interesting to look at how these different groups of people were reacting to each other, to different belief systems. And looking at it today, you can dive into what were early Christians thinking about necromancy? Spoiler right. alert, they did it. And it's fascinating to draw lines to some things like that. So that is one of my favorite things to do. Um, and I can't wait to jump aboard the river sticks again with you this, this okay. season. I know we have so many amazing episodes planned and we're going to talk about it at the end of the podcast, what you can kind of expect from yeah. this season. <laughs> From us, we're going to really try to stick to it because sometimes we just come on here and film. Basically, we don't always have a schedule. That's why we don't give a schedule because we just kind of talk about what we want to and authentically mm -hmm. like is appropriate to talk about. So oh, yeah. or sometimes things happen to us. Like we go to Gettysburg and we have paranormal experiences. And we want to talk about U.S. history and how crazy and dark it is and the Civil War. Um, so or like when I went to Italy and you see yeah. people vandalizing Pompeii, like I that shit. Screams in our archaeology um <laughs> I mean yeah you should always be respectful anywhere you go <laughs> when you're going to visit to see monuments um things that are preserved but um we do have a whole episode on that that's the Rome and listener Q&A episode where 10 dives into detail so if you're new here I highly suggest listening to season one you don't have to listen to all of it to like understand we kind of gave you the whole backstory um but episode one of season one is where we really go into detail of you know, a lot of people are very interested and I understand, um, and how, you know, we do these things or how yeah. you're able to see spirits. I don't know. It just kind of, happened. <laughs> it just kind of happened. Yeah. And then we just get a lot of questions about like really death. Like, why are you interested in that? And it's, I could go on a whole 40 minute PowerPoint presentation yeah. when I'm obsessed with that. <laughs> I mean, and I, and I do think, you know, my own family and friends have even told me this, it's really refreshing to have somebody mm -hmm. that gets so excited about death and not in a morbid way, but to talk about it and to try to understand it because there's so many different beliefs about death. And guess what? 
they're all right. Like there's not one belief around death. That's like, this is it. And this is the only thing. This is the um, one. <laughs> this is the one thing, you know, that's why I don't get why people get so uptight about it. It's like, there's yeah. so many different cultures, religions, belief systems around death and whatever brings you comfort, you know? So I always am like, so what are your thoughts about death? You like ghosts? Like what's going on? That's how I like to talk to people. That's how Chelsea and I start our friendship. So, you know, any good ghost stories? Do you like yeah. the underworld, the Greek underworld? Do you like Hades? Yes or no? Tell me. Are <laughs> you a to check no? <laughs> um, so that's really how we come at this podcast as a place of like understanding death, Um, you know, talking about it, making it less of a taboo subject. Hopefully you find some comfort in it. Um, And we do have quite a few episodes on death already. We talked about it for like five episodes straight. <laughs> We are the death royals. <laughs> we are. That's why we call ourselves the ghost hosts because you know what? I'm just trying to be a graveyard maiden. I just want to walk around cemeteries, give offerings to spirits and just, I rather talk to spirits than people. That's how I live my life. Absolutely. Honestly. <laughs> well, moving on to the next, um, we kind of, you know, went into who we are, but it is new year's. We are recording this on new year's day. It is officially 2023. Full transparency. We tried to record this episode yesterday. We're, we'll we'll keep it real. We always do. Um, it was a disaster. <laughs> filming. Oh, I thought we were pretty funny yesterday. Like, dare I say, I thought we were pretty funny. I think we're pretty funny, but I mean, filming, we really had so many technical problems. Oh, it was, it was truly like the last day of 2022, really just sucker punching us. <laughs> It was, and I kind of took it as a sign that maybe we should wait to the new year to film for season two, because anything that can go wrong yesterday did. So here we are again, refilming this episode. It feels better this time. Like the energy feels better. When we were recording last night, I don't know what was going on, but it felt weird. I was shaking in my britches. Yeah, it was weird. It wasn't right. So I'm kind of happy it got messed up, but that definitely was a sign to record today. Oh, absolutely. But... How was your New Year's Eve? How has your New Year's Day been? And did you stay up to midnight? And do you have any like New Year's Eve traditions? Oh yeah. New Year's Eve. I spent it by myself. It was glorious. It was it. glorious. I was here for it. I, I I'm always gonna be this one that normalizes this because I don't like to go to parties that much. I get anxiety in big groups of people. Um, I'll, I'll go, like, I like to socialize for a little bit and then I come home and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta take a break. <laughs> I'll see you in five to seven business days. Yeah, I never want to be invited to a party again, but last night I truly didn't want to do anything. I could have, I could have gone and to parties and had other plans to get dressed up, but I sat on my couch with my cat. I ate some leftovers from Christmas. Mm-hmm. I went to bed before the ball dropped. <laughs> what a dream. Honestly. Excellent. With my heating. Pad, like, this is life. See, and that's a perk of not going out. One, you don't have to wear a bra and that will truly decide an evening for me. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. I had my heating pad. I poured myself a little glass of wine. I was very happy and thankful to be in a very peaceful state. And I was like, you know what? I want to, this is how I want to bring it to 2023. This past year has been very chaotic and unstable for me. Um, I talk about that heavily, you know, we're very open here about some of the things we go through. Like, you know, life is a freaking journey, man. And I want to talk about the tower moments I had last year. Holy shit. So it you know, really was a razor scooter to the ankles. <laughs> every day was a razor scooter to the ankle. I'm like, what's one more thing that's going to happen? What what else can happen? So I said, fuck it. I'm sitting on my couch and putting my heating pad on. I'm not getting dressed. Honestly, that is a dream. Like best thing ever. But do you have any traditions? Yes. Yes, I do. So I come from a line of um, very traditional Italian folk practitioners um, on my dad's side. And my great aunt Jean, shout out to her. She would always tell us or tell everybody she died before I was born. We Um, love aunt Jean here. We love aunt Jean here. She would always tell people to wear their underwear inside out. So yesterday I wore my underwear inside out. It's supposed to bring in luck, abundance, money, manifestation. So um, if you're ever in like a pinch and you like really need, you know, Need extra boost, wear your underwear inside out. And I, I swear by it. Like she swore by it. She told my whole family to do it. My family did it yesterday. So, you know, that's a folk superstition that's been passed down. Um, but that's what we do. I what love else? that. Oh, I also opened my windows and my doors to kind of let in the new year to welcome it. Um, mm-hmm. openly. <laughs> I did some divination first. So I'm like, what kind of year is this going to be? Am I going to have to hold the door back? like Hodor and like not let it in. 
do I want it to come in my house? I did check the energy before I opened my door. I'm like, I'm in 2023, let's go. <laughs> I'll tussle, man. Um, but I did open my windows and it was beautiful out today. So that's what, that's it. I just did little things. But what about you? What, what happened for you yesterday? So first of all, I love that your Aunt Jean did that and taught you that because my middle name is Jean. So shout out to Aunt Jean. We love Aunt Jean. We stand her in this house. Stand my Aunt Jean. family's probably going to listen to this podcast episode. And she was very beloved to my family. So shout out to her. Shout out to Aunt Jean. Um, but also I have many a time, especially last year, have gone throughout the day and then have discovered that I was wearing my underwear inside out halfway through the day. And I was like, ah, it's too late to change. So it's like, you know what? Maybe I needed that good luck during you the needed year. good luck. Maybe someone had you wear your underwear inside out for that purpose. So she swore mm -hmm. by it. So I was like, I'm going to give it a go because it worked for her. So it's going to work for me. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm going to go into this year with that mentality. If it happens, it happens. And you know what? Your girl needs luck. Um, yeah. So yesterday was pretty nice. It was, you know, um, kind of just calming down from the holidays. I was lucky enough to have my parents come out for the holidays. They live across the country from me. Sister and brother-in-law came down. It was so nice and just like so full of family. But I was talking to Chelsea a lot this past month and it was just like, I have been stressed mm -hmm. all holiday season. Oh yeah. And it, it was great. It all worked out in the end. But yesterday was super nice because we didn't do anything. We actually hung out with our next door neighbors who we love dearly. And it was just nice. We just hung out, drank um, sparkling apple cider and watched the ball fall. Um, so it was super nice. And then I went right to bed. <laughs> that is honestly the dream. And, you know, I used to go out all the time on New Year's Eve. I used to get I drunk. Never. I don't think I ever um, have. I used to, it used to be a huge part of my life before, like I had like a huge life change here. And now I, I can mm -hmm. barely drink because I communicate with spirits. And like, sometimes when you drink, it gets a little stressful. So, um, you know, I've been on this journey to like really bettering myself, um, and I used to, I used to binge drink on the weekends. It used to be a thing for me. It was never good, but that's why I never felt guilty now about like, I used to have FOMO. Um, oh, yeah. and I didn't feel one ounce of guilt of just sitting home yesterday. Good. And if I, that's what you want to do, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, because you know what, sometimes you don't want to go out and hang out with people. It's stressful. Yeah. Like honestly, a perfect night for me is staying in with my husband and our two kitty cats and watching YouTube video game streamers honestly oh yeah that's what I do I sit on Twitch I've, I've been into Disney Dreamlight Valley I'm a huge gamer I really like cozy gaming um mm -hmm. I used to game all the time when I was younger to kind of like escape stressful mm -hmm. situations in school I was bullied a lot when I was younger so I used to come home and like escape and disassociate with video games but it's always been very healing to me. So I, I started playing Disney Dream My Valley. I was playing today. My whole town is like Christmas. If you don't know what it is, oh my God, it's the best game. I talk about I all the time. No, 10, you need it. it. They're coming out with a free version. I'm not sure when. This is like the paid version. Um, So do they have it on the Switch? It's on the Switch. Oh, sign me off. It's on the Switch. It is my favorite game. It's like Animal Crossing, but Disney, and it's 10 times better. Um, so I do that a lot. And I was playing that today just to like decompress, you know, have a good time. Just oh, I love that so much. Like oh, yeah. I still, and ugh, shout out to the people who've been listening, but I have not started Witcher 3 yet. Um, <laughs> I won't do it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not compelled to watch Witcher 3 anymore. I want to, because I've seen Kevin play it and I love the storyline. I love all the creatures and I actually want to dive into the bestiary and see mythologically where they're getting their inspiration from mm -hmm. um because I find that fascinating plus like your girl loves swords and weaponry so like you should do it up. it's gonna be a um, long winter yeah it is <laughs> so maybe I'll do it to like break up dissertation but um a new year's tradition that I have or I learned through the years is apparently wearing red underwear on new it's a lot of underwear heavy on yeah new year's I wonder why. <laughs> but on new year's eve it's believed if you wear red underwear you're going into the new year confident um luck mm -hmm. and it can inspire confidence and love so i learned this when i used to work retail at victoria's secret and i would work um summer and christmas in between college so i remember I would be working and bus loads of women would be dropped off and 
running us out of the store with red underwear. Like the day after we had no red panties for miles. That's so funny. And I I've heard of that superstition before I've never done it. Cause like I do the inside out underwear, but I didn't realize how many people actually did something like that. So your girl wore red underwear last night and I have it on right now. <laughs> Listen, we're hoping for the best here. Okay. We need a good year. It's, we need a good year. So we're sending all the good vibes to everybody else too. We need a good year. We do. Um, <laughs> but since we are talking about the new year, you know, A lot of you, we know, even myself included, have taken a break from our spiritual practice because I think, you know, breaks are important. You need to do some self-care. You need to take a break. Or maybe those of you are trying to get into spirituality or you're trying to find some sort of path where, you know, whatever you feel like resonates with you in terms of belief system. So, um, you know, Ten, what is one thing you would tell people about maybe getting back into a practice or if they're just starting out, you know, where would you start if it's like the new year? if it's the new year um okay so for me this time of the year while it is like the new year like it's January it's one one um it is interesting because we're also getting thrown so many different things and what I mean by that is during December it is the month of fragrance commercials and by Christmas, those fragrance commercials are gone. By December 26th, that is when everybody starts coming out about, oh, like you want to feel good. You want to look good. Like join this, join this, do this, do this. And it can be overwhelming, especially, you know, just, you know, having that thrown at you. But when you get into the spiritual aspect, it's kind of the same thing. I think a lot of us put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, you know, get back into journaling, get back into tarot reading, heck, getting back into going to church. And I think that's a lot of stress for a lot of people because you, in your mind, are putting these crazy kind of standards in your head of, I have to, I have to, I have to. Mm -hmm. And I want all of you to ask yourselves, why do you have to? And ask yourselves, do you want to? Because First and foremost, this should be doing it for you and not because a commercial on television is telling you to go to Planet Fitness. Like, that's not what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. So do it for you. And if you're like, I really just enjoy tarot cards, the artwork is beautiful. I want to learn this year. Fantastic. Here are some resources. If you're like, you know what? I'm going to start meditating again and I'm going to learn about ancient divination and practices. Awesome. Here's some resources. But don't hold yourself to these crazy standards. Make them doable of, hey, this week I'm going to do this. Hey, next month I'm going to do that. But ask yourselves, why do you want to? And hopefully you're doing it for you because that is your practice at the end of the day. Yes. There's a difference between needing to do something and wanting to do something. And I sometimes think spirituality gets pushed down our throats where it's like, you know, I don't think it's for everybody. I think people can you know, learn about it, study about it, but sometimes it's not for everybody and that's okay. You know, spiritual journeys are really hard. Um, especially, you know, if you're on the road to learning and you know, you're say you're a psychic medium and you're trying to practice that, like, it's not easy. So, you know, set realistic like standards for yourself and goals. Like, don't think you're going to be like an all seeing knowing wizard, like February, no one's ever going to be that, you know, we're all constantly learning and yeah you know, just remember to take it one step at a time. Um, one thing I like to do, if you're like need motivation to get back into your practice, I always like to start with cleaning some of my altars or cleaning like my working space where I do divination just to kind of like give it a refresh or I'll change something. Like maybe I'll use a different tarot deck. Um, I retired one of my tarot decks this year. Who'd you retire? Darkwood. No, they're on the IR. (laughs) I, I put, yep, she's gone. Um, I am a big believer in like, you know, I kind of think tarot decks have their own energy and personalities. And I just kind of felt like I was burnt out from using it. I, I read professionally. So I use it in all my client readings and I was like, I really need to change the energy this year. So I'm using your wandering star that you gifted me for Yule as like my main tarot deck. Now the dark wood that you got me, she's actually on one of the shelves up here. Yeah. So sometimes it's like just changing something small can really Mm -hmm. give you a whole like refresh. Um, so don't think you have to like do something crazy, even just like pulling some cards, pull three cards and see like, should I, do I, does this feeling good for me right now? Or do I not want to get back into this? And it's okay. Absolutely. And I feel like the more it gets pushed down your throat, 
um, the more you're going to kind of pull away from it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that goes with any type of spirituality, even organized religion, you know? Oh yeah. It it can be rough and it can make you kind of pull away and be like, nah, that ain't for me when it could be for you. Exactly. So just take it one step at a time. We are not in a rush to get to where we're going. I'm still tired. I'm like, I'm still like coming out of a food coma from the holiday. I'm like, I don't care if it's January 1st. I, I ate a lot of cake and I, I want to sleep for five days. I'm just over it. Absolutely. And I think around this time of the year, a lot of people will jump into certain things. And again, they'll see like a lot of things with like buzzwords in it, but do it for you. And, you know, we have a great previous episode on, you know, red flags and readers, mediumship people. So just, just beware during this time, because that is kind of the downside and the darker side of spirituality is people will one, weaponize it and two, you know, use it for their own good and not yours. Yeah. And this actually, I think is a really good segue into the next topic. Um, We're going to talk a little bit about psychic mediumship in this episode because, you know, Todd and I are coming out with our university, um, a foundations one course to psychic mediumship, which we've been talking about on our social media platforms, which are going to be linked in the show notes if you're interested in following us. Um, But I do want to talk about psychic mediumship today because I do think there's a lot of misinformation around psychic mediumship. I don't think people actually know what it is. And we kind of want to answer some questions and talk a little bit about, you know, our experience being professional evidential psychic mediums. Um, So, you know, speaking of people like weaponizing it, I, I, you know, being a psychic medium does not make you an all seeing, all knowing person. It doesn't make you like this powerful. It doesn't make you Harry Potter. Yeah. It's not, it's not for us. Um, and I want to start with a very basic definition of psychic mediumship. And that is being able to channel spirits that have crossed over to the other side. So like Mm -hmm. say your grandma dies and she's crossed over to the other side, it's channeling spirits that are already deceased and on the other side. Now, psychic mediumship can help enhance other clairs, um, which we did a whole episode on Patreon about how like we hate talking about no, I can't name clairs. I love eclairs. I don't know the clairs. I don't listen, I am not a Claire girly. I don't know the clairs. Um, I never really was taught that way. And it's just like all I know is I can I can see in here. That that's all I know. And I don't know what, what I got my called. ears pierced at Claire's. <laughs> So I think people put a lot of pressure on like, I have to open up this one. I have to be Claire audience, which is clear hearing. I, I um, did know that one. <laughs> that's the only one I know. Cause it, it makes sense. Claire audience. Um, yes. but I get very confused. I, I don't know. Some people on the internet is like, here are five ways to open up your Claire cognizance. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Something in the mind, right? Is that seeing? I think it's like having a knowing see, I don't freaking know. We did a whole, we did a whole episode on this already. It was very funny. We were like, the fuck i have no clue man um but psychic mediumship is being able to communicate with a deceased on the other side so a lot of people have like a very misconstrued conception of what that is it is talking to the dead it is a form of necromancy so let me know if i missed anything i kind of no that is my favorite thing to kind of just like boo drop on somebody is it is a form of necromancy it's necromancy i said the it de- the definition of necromancy is communing with the dead that's literally the basic definition of necromancy. And I love telling people I practice necromancy that don't know what it is because they get so freaked out and they think I'm like reanimating corpses and like bringing people back to life. I'm like, no, it's communication with the dead. That is part of it, but it's right. really just communicating. And, you know, it is so interesting because psychic mediumship is a great umbrella term as is necromancy. And it is only for, you know, humans it can be animals who have also passed on um but it is only that it's nothing else you know it's not other types of spirits or entities no absolutely so we were getting a lot of questions about that and then it just made me realize the amount of misinformation on the internet around channeling and mediumship and what are the differences um so it's okay if you didn't know that i just wanted to make that very clear like that is psychic mediumship and ted and i practice from an evidential psychic mediums ship standpoint which what our whole course is based on is providing yeah. evidence so we believe in like the normal before the paranormal like we believe in science here we are very much into like studying and researching and with mediumship 
you know, when you're going to give a message to a client, we always want to give someone a piece of evidence. The spirit will give us something that we wouldn't know that would confirm to that person that that is the spirit we were channeling. You know, I'm not just going to be like, does anyone have a dead grandmother? (laughs) Yeah. That's basically everybody, right? Like, you know, your great, great grandmother twice removed. Is she dead? (laughs) Is she gone? She here? <laughs> He's saying that she's at peace. You know, you need to give someone so much more than that. Yeah. Um, like whether it be like how they died, um, their personality, something that they used to wear. You know, I've gotten things in people's caskets before where people have been like, what the, f- how did you know that? I'm like, I don't know. Oh, we've gotten like, tattoos. Tattoos. We've, yep. Um, Crazy stuff. Like some saying that you were called by this individual that was a nickname for you. Yes. I, um, I did a psychic mediumship live recently and it was so fun. I did it, um, for free before the holidays. Cause I wanted to give back to our community, yeah. and, like provide some closure. I, if I could do it for free every single day of my life, I would do it. Right. I have so much fun. Um, I love talking to the dead. I love giving messages to people. Everyone is so fun in the comments. Um, but yeah, I had someone actually give me their name. I've never really gotten a name before. That's a very rare thing. I love that. I know they gave me their name and I was like, you gave me your name. No one really gives me names. I never really get names, but, um, yeah. So that's really how we're teaching it. And that's, I'm under the belief. That's the only way you should be doing a psychic mediumship. Yeah. And it is interesting to be doing it on like this side, like the teaching side of it, because of what we see online and in TV and Hollywood, like people will portray spiritualists or psychic mediums you know, as people just going up and tapping on somebody's shoulder in the supermarket and being like, hi, how are you? Uh, Your brother is at peace. And it's like that. mm, mm." No, it's, it's, it's incorrect. And I'll actually be totally honest here. Since I was an older adult that developed, well, I was like in my mid twenties. I didn't have a reference to psychic mediumship except Caputo the Long Island medium, which the celebrity psychic mediums, and this is nothing against her, but they don't show the full, the full way of doing psychic mediumship. So I thought that you could just go up to people in grocery stores. I never did it because like, I'm an introvert and I would never do that, but you have to realize she has a whole production team and they're bringing cameras into these grocery stores. These people are signing consent waivers to be on TV. They know that there's a chance she can come up to them and give a reading. So they're already giving their consent. And we talk about consent so much in this class, these courses that we're teaching, but that was like a huge misconception that I had where it was like, is my purpose just to walk around and just start giving people messages? Like, here's me. <laughs> Hi. Um, you know, and it's like, that was so wrong, but I didn't have like any source of information on like, how, where do you go to learn psychic? You don't, right? You don't, where are you supposed to go? And this is before TikTok even existed. So I, I didn't have like a community or, you know, there's uh, psychic mediums of TikTok that you can like go to. A lot of psychic mediums are on there. Um, I just didn't know where to turn to. I was like, oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's a scary thing. Not only because you're just kind of thinking about yourself and like what you're seeing. So you're trying to take that in first. And then once you kind of move past that, you're like, oh, now what do I do? Like, right. It's like, now what? <laughs> There's um, no guide. He's <laughs> a psychic mediumship. <laughs> so we really tried to, um, and we executed perfectly, I think, you know, how we learned psychic mediumship from our own trial and error. And what I think is fascinating is that Ken and I both learned it the same way and we did not learn it together. Yeah. Two-year-old me and 24-year-old Chelsea were We're teaming up in the trials and tribulations of it together. (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, it's, we do some things differently. Obviously there are some very like stark differences, but the basis of it is all the same. And it's like, you talk to other psychic mediums and they also come to the same conclusion. So it's fascinating how it all kind of works out. Um, so we really put together like this huge course of basics, foundations, ethics, which is like number one, most important. You need to have an ethics, moral code as a spiritualist. Um, if you're reading for people. And, you know, we're super excited about it. So we can't wait to offer it. But, you know, um, what is one thing you had to learn the hard way with your mediumship? I always like to ask this question. Um, 
like something that could have been traumatizing or you wish that you had known earlier? That I could have had boundaries in the sense of not always, in a sense, being on, on call, I guess, like the witch is in kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't realize that I could flip the proverbial sign into closed. Um, So I think that was probably one of the most hard, uh, that learning curve was awfully steep. Um, Yeah, I I was, I too have been there. (laughs) That is a slippery learning curve right yeah. there. Um, <laughs> and with that, I remember I was in middle school and a family friend, um, his brother, I believe, passed away. And we went to the service because it was at the church that we had, you know, gone to previously. And we were in there for the service and the pews, all of that kind of good stuff. And I remember, you know, the casket comes down and they put it at the front and the family comes down and I remember just seeing the deceased individual walking down with his family and then pacing up near the altar and everything and then just kind of like walking around trying to console his family like he he clearly knew what was going on but I just remember being so confused because nobody else was seeing this occur. And with that being said, I didn't know how to put in a boundary of, I don't want to see this right now. And being, what are you in eighth grade? 13. I, again, didn't know what was happening. And I thought it was, oh my God, am I nervous about being in a church? Like, am I X, Y, and Z kind of stuff? And I just remember becoming so overwhelmed and I couldn't breathe with grief. And learning later on, you know, becoming more focused on death and death practices and, you know, helping individuals with that. It's really eye-opening to experience everybody's grief at once. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something as a death witch and as a psychic medium, I wish I would have learned. And I think learning that at 13 was a very hard lesson to learn. And I just remember absorbing and feeling like atlas with everybody's grief on my shoulders that I broke down into gut-wrenching sobs to the point where my dad was like are you okay and I was like clearly not dad um yeah my grief is hard I had to tell him my back was in pain and it was like seizing up because I do have back issues and I was like I need to go lay down in the car so I I had to get out of there like it was sweltering with grief And I didn't realize that. And, you know, for lack of a better term, it felt like being a grief and spiritual shamwow for the entire church service. (laughs) It sucked. (laughs) Oh my God, not the shamwow. (laughs) Like, I don't know how else to describe it, but you are absorbing and having to channel and process everybody's grief at once and kind of redistribute it with healing. And it was, it knocked me on my ass. I know. And I don't think people talk about that enough. You know, that's terrifying at 13. It's like, you didn't know what was happening to you. You just were going to a service to pay your respects. And like, all these things are happening. And you're like, hello, I need to go lay down. Hello. I need to go to sleep. Like, why do I feel like this? But it's true. Like I was at, um, you know, my grandmother passed away, uh, about a year and a half ago, I think can't even remember. I think it's a year and a half ago. And when I went to the, uh, funeral service, it was really hard for me not because, you know, I was sad she passed away, but I, I understand that, you know, it's your time, your time. She lived a very great life. Um, I wasn't too upset about that, but the grief in the room was so heavy. And like, when you just have the gift of being a medium, it's really hard to kind of ground that energy. And, you know, we're going to be talking about protection to like also in our mediumship course, because, there are things you have to do to like protect yourself. Not that you're going to be channeling evil spirits or someone's going to possess your soul. It's protecting yourself from grief. Um, yeah. when you're getting a message. Yeah. I think that was the craziest thing that I, I wish I had somebody to be like, um, if I'm going to a funeral, what can 13 year old me do and understand that? But Chelsea, Uno reverse, what is something you wish that you had learned? There's so many things. Um, (laughs) I know there's so much. I literally thought of five the minute, you know, we were talking about these questions today. Um, Mm -hmm. But the 
I would say the most traumatizing one for me was when I got so sick because I didn't take a break from being a medium. Um, I didn't know that was a thing that could happen to you. And I had been practicing and channeling mediumship and working with clients. I was doing like a few readings a day mm -hmm. and I never took a break and I got so spiritually sick. I actually, my physical body was sick. I got the flu and yeah. I couldn't even move. Like my whole body was shot and, you know, I'm always into the normal before the paranormal, but they, those two definitely were correlated because think about like, you're opening yourself up to death and grief yeah. and doing that and not taking a break. What do you think is going to happen to your physical body? Right. Well, it's just exhausting you. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, all your kind of walls are down at that point for sickness to come in. Right. Exactly. So, um, <clears throat> that was like a really crazy thing for me. And I was bedridden for like a week and then I couldn't do readings for two months. And I was traumatized by it. It didn't make me want to go back into doing client readings. I learned this very early on about two years ago. Um, and then, you know, I was watching another celebrity psychic medium had had the same experience of getting sick and having to take off actually a whole year because he had just been channeling too much. And I think it was Tyler Henry. Um, I don't know if it was a year. I can't remember the time frame, but he did talk about it about how he had. Oh no, it wasn't Tyler Henry. I can't remember who it was. I saw it, and I was like, it's a real goddamn thing. So learning how to take care of myself and balancing um, between channeling and knowing when to take time for myself and taking off um, and self care because no one teaches you that, and I had to learn the hard way. That was a really scary time. I remember you just being so sick. I was so sick. And I would FaceTime you and you would just be like in the trenches of your bed. Like I was so sick. It was the sickest I think I've ever been in such a long time. I thought of COVID. Yeah. And it was like, you know, we were just you know, co not coming out of COVID, but it was like during that time when like COVID was still peaking and things like that. So I thought I had COVID. Thank God I didn't. But it was my body was so tired and weak from channeling that I, I got sick. Yeah. It literally was just like, we need a break and I'm going to force you into it. Yeah. Just shut down and said, mm, bye. We're going to let you down <laughs> for a whole week. And I'm looking at my ancestors, like, was anyone? Gonna and they're like, you did this. You yeah. did that. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. I do take accountability for the fact that I did not take breaks. You know, I'm, I made a, a huge mistake, but it was a mistake that kind of turned into a lesson. Yeah. Of like now I know. And like, when I talk about it, I'm very open about it. Cause it did happen to me. And some of you do were there around the time where I, I did have this like major, like sickness come over yeah. <laughs> from doing too much spiritual work. So it's a thing. That's why, you know, you got to take breaks and practicing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Take a break. Um, that goes across the board, spirituality, religion, uh, school, anything, anything really take a break, yeah. life, work, take a break. Like yeah, we'll get sick. Yeah. And you only have one body and you have to take care of you before you take care of anything else. Exactly. So, um, yeah, we were getting a lot of questions about when the psychic mediumship course was going to go up. We're not sure it's coming in January. I don't want to give anyone a date because I like to, um, you know, I want to have a solid date. We're almost done. We're perfectionists. And yeah. if things are not perfect, we will cry. So we are trying to make sure that everything is golden for you yeah. guys, because, you know, we wanted to give something, you know, that we wish that we had because it's, it was a steep learning curve. <laughs> yeah. And, oh my God. I feel like like a, an influencer when I say this term. So like, I'm going to laugh at myself, but it's really a passion project of mine. <laughs> Oh, wow. The hyena cackle that came out of my mouth. The passion project. I, there's no other way to describe it. But when I, I said this to myself when I finally got things under control, I said, it is going to be my life mission to make sure other people know about these things because I didn't have anywhere to turn to. So it's really coming from a place of like, we want to help and, um, you know, and, and teach you, this is the foundations one. So you're not going to walk out of here. Like I know everything. Um, no, <laughs> No, you're not no. a wizard harry <laughs> yeah we are not all seeing all magical wizards um even ten and i are constantly still learning new things, and new things all the time i love learning it's so fun every damn day <laughs> but also too on the on the topic of psychic mediumship we are having a psychic mediumship live on january 6th at seven o'clock p.m eastern time um it's going to be on a stream so if you're interested in getting a ticket we are going to include the event in the show notes um 
come hang out if you want to see how we channel. Um, it is a live stream, so you're not on video. Don't worry. We're going to be on video. <laughs> you guys are not. Um, but we do have like an active chat that goes and like, it's just a lot of fun. People are just so awesome and incredible when it comes to mediumship and, you know, helping other people in the healing process. So, oh yeah, hundred percent, like shout out to the crowd. <laughs> Yeah. You guys are always great every time we do them and we, it's going to be 10 and I both doing it. So it's a lot of fun. Um, okay. So let's round out our episode, our season two, episode one. What is something from last season that we talked about that you truly loved and would recommend? Do you want to go first or you want me to go first? Hades. (laughs) Final answer next. (laughs) Um, I loved talking about Hades, Hecate, um, anything to do with the Chthonic. Those are some of our best performing episodes because I think people are just so fascinated by who doesn't love Greek mythology. We all did. Right. Growing yeah. up. Doesn't matter who you are. We all loved it. We loved um, Egyptian mythology. I love ancient Egypt. Oh. Um, Mes- uh, Mesopotamian mythology. Oh my God. You want to something crazy? When I was in middle school and high school, I had an obsession with Mesopotamia. Really? It, it's the gateway. It's the gateway to history, ancient history. It, it is the gateway. Like I in college would go back and take history courses as gen eds to fulfill my gen ed requirement. And my friends would be like, why aren't you just taking like art? Yeah. You no, know, I need to go back and take a Mesopotamia course. Like I want to learn about ancient, ancient mythology. And I every time, anytime there was an opportunity. I had to go learn about Mesopotamia. I unfortunately don't remember a lot of things, but maybe we'll have to do some Mesopotamia episodes because yeah. I Mesopotamia will always have a special place in my heart. Like Queen Puabi, excuse me. Like I love everything about like the city states of Ur and all of that amazing kind of beginnings of civilization over there. And my undergrad degree focused on Mesopotamia, the Levant and ancient Egypt. So Mesopotamia will always have a special place. Yeah, in my heart. it's crazy. Cause I was like weirdly obsessed with it. Like I, my friends would be like, how many times did you go learn about Mesopotamia? What was going I mean, on? We all had those weird obsessions, man. Mine was the Titanic and yours is Mesopotamia. Mine is Mesopotamia. So I just love anything about like ancient religion and belief systems. And so oh, we're going to have to do an episode. We are, we'll do it this season. But also another thing I loved was the paranormal episodes we did. Those were so fun. Or I scared myself. Yeah, yeah they were kind of, they were really scary actually. They were spooky. <laughs> we are, we were spooky girls and it was the season of October. So we really were getting spooky with it. Like the astral parasites and hitchhiking ghosts, like that episode's terrifying. <laughs> oh, I have some good ideas for spooky episodes. Okay, so we'll see we have so much to do in season two. But what is something you loved that we talked about? If I hopefully didn't take all the episodes. <laughs> um, well, some of my favorite ones were diving into my academic blackout ones. So debunking. So I love the mythology ones. Like I love doing those, but I love doing the de- the debunking ones. So um the Persephone episode one of is she a Mycenaean goddess? No. Is she predating Hades? No. Um, so all of these things I loved doing because I got to put my degree to use. Um, but I also loved, and I hope to continue on this route, is mystery cults and mystery religions of the ancient world, where we covered the Eleusinian mysteries of Persephone and Demeter. But I cannot wait to just geek out and talk about the mystery religions and mystery cults of Isis, Dionysus, Mithras, even Christianity, I would argue is one. I'm so excited for that. I really want to talk about the cult of Dionysus so bad. I don't really know much about it, but I just kind of want to listen to you going up an academic blackout. I know a little bit about it, but I always find it so fascinating and 10 for the listeners cults. When you use the word cults, we're not talking about cults in the sense of so, what it means. Absolutely. So cults, we have to kind of take out our 20, now 23, perception of that word and mystery cults to the ancient um, Eastern Mediterranean peoples is really about joining a religious or spiritual group that transformed you in a different way than state religion did. Mm -hmm. So if we were pagan Romans, you know, Augustus is emperor, um, but we wanted to join the mystery cult of 
um, Eleusis for Persephone and Demeter, we could do that. And the Roman emperor would be okay with you doing that. In fact, they were quite fine with it. As long as you were doing your um, offerings to the state gods, such as Jupiter Optimus, um, as long as you were, you know, giving offerings or paying taxes for the cult of the emperor later on, that would kind of cause problems with, you know, different mystery cults and the emperor later on. But, you know, for that time period, they were all about it. They're like, great. You want to go join something else and it's helping you? Perfect. We'll see you next week for the offering for Jupiter. And that is the difference. And there's, you know, a few things that do make mystery cults mystery cults. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, the big four things, um, it is in the Eleusinian Mysteries episode. But I cannot wait for the one about Dionysus because there is a room in Pompeii beautifully preserved, like astoundingly preserved. Mm -hmm. And the room is covered in frescoes and what we think is an initiation scene for the cult of Dionysus. I, I can't wait. And it really segues into like, you know, how we really want to end this episode is like, what are we so excited for? These are all the things we're excited for. We're going to be diving into death more, um, specifically the Catholic underworld. We hope to have some guests on our mm -hmm. podcast um, to talk about, you know, we want us, we want people on here that have different practices than us. I always am fascinated by what other people do. Like we have um, an episode with Lena, who is a Jesus witch. And well, that God. episode to me was fascinating. I genuinely enjoyed that episode because that's not something I do. And you know, we're looking for people in the community that are mentors, teachers that really excel in their practice and what they do. And like, they want to bring light to things. So um, we hope to open our, our space up more and our platform more to people who want to come on and just share knowledge, exchange beliefs, ideas, even if it's different than ours. Um, oh, absolutely. Exciting. I really want to have, you know, guests on who have, you know, their credentials in yes. teaching or ancient history or archaeology and you know, discuss, you know, lesser known topics, especially like the mistress and um, master of animals and who they may have inspired and turned into. Like, it's so fascinating, like how interconnected everything is. It really is. And I was even thinking too, the other day, like, I would love to have like some paranormal researchers on here, like ones that do it ethically. Like we are open to a lot of things like this podcast is really all encompassing in terms of spirituality. So, um, you know, hopefully... <laughs> We find more guests this year um, that we are excited to have on, but yeah, that's what you can expect for season two, season two here of Six and Bones. We're going to be on YouTube once a week. We can't podcast from our bed anymore. I know, dude, I, I had to dress. I could not just lay with the laptop right underneath my chin. Like, I mean, you could, who cares? <laughs> coming to you live from my bed. <laughs> who cares? Um, I know we did get dressed up for this one episode. We didn't even like coordinate we both always just wear black anytime we do something but I, I, you know I like to pop on here with no makeup on sometimes I don't give a shit you know but I just felt like you know this was the first one we had to <laughs> come correct or don't come at all um really setting yeah. the tone so yeah our um what do you call it um oh, Jesus what is it called your like uniform usually is black <laughs> I mean what other color would we wear black is such a happy color I think Morticia Adams said it best Oh my God. Can I tell a quick story before we end the episode? Absolutely. I want to know what you think about this. Cause I don't even think I told you this. Okay. So I saw my family on Friday. My mom had like another Christmas party because it was my side of the family that we didn't get to see. So we had to exchange gifts mm -hmm. and I get gifts from the side of the family and I was opening my gifts. Now, the first gift, my cousin asked me to be her bridesmaid, which wow. I was so excited about. We are wearing black dresses, which I'm stoked. Love. I was like, girl, yeah, I'll be in your bridal <laughs> party. Like, we're wearing black. Sign me up. And they're all like floor length, like Morticia vibe gowns. She's going for a very formal type of look. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm here for it. So, yeah, I said yes. So, like, <laughs> but anyway, so she gifts me this evil eye bracelet. So I'm like, this is great. I love it. Thank you so much. She knows like, sh she's like, you know, we need the evil eye bracelets, whatever. The next gift that I open up, my uh -huh. hand me, evil eye earrings. So I'm like, huh. The next gift that I open up is an evil eye tank top from my cousin. And none of them coordinated on these gifts. So I'm sitting here thinking, you know, 
this is a fucking sign, right? <laughs> like what, <laughs> what is happening here? And I'm like looking at all this stuff and it's all like wearable things, you know? Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? That's interesting. Did they tell you like why they got it or where they got it from? They just, they just felt compelled to buy it for me was always the answer. They were like, oh, I saw an evil eye and I thought of you. Huh. Well, that's good. Um, it's good. But also I'm like out here looking at my ancestors, like, yeah, do they know something? I don't know. Like, should I be prepping? I don't know. I'm like, what's going on here? So I just thought it was interesting because, you know, people always ask me about signs and normally if I get an evil, I don't think anything of it, but I got three in a row from three different people that did not coordinate on gifts that have never gifted me an evil eye before. Huh? I just thought that was a little, little interesting. That is interesting. And it would be interesting to see if you wear those around those gift givers. And if something happens, that would be, well, I, I, I left something out. I left something out of the story. So last week I'm going through, I know this is, this is like some drama over here. <laughs> Where's the tea? It is piping. <laughs> so spiritual drama. So last week I was emptying out one of my bags that I had brought somewhere. And I don't want to say because <laughs> I'm just not going to say my evil eye was broke. What? I opened my bag and my evil eye necklace broke and I had nothing harsh in that bag. It was just closed and it was like tucked away in a pocket and the evil eye charm broke. So obviously when your evil eye breaks, it means it protected you from something. And then a week later, I get three more of them. Can I ask this? Yeah. Were any of those people there? No. No. They were not. Oh, we've just had the plot thickens. So I'm going to have to update everybody. I'm never going to say who probably sent me the evil eye because, you know, I have a lot of people that I know that listen to this podcast, but, um, I don't think that's the reason. It's just, I think my evil eye got broken and then I was gifted three more. And I'm like, why do I have three evil eyes now? Yeah. I don't think it's anything of like, something's coming prepare. No, no. Get in your bunker now. (laughs) Um, I think it's more along the lines of, you know, it broke and that is a good sign that it did, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever was coming. Um, which is why like, I'm a firm believer of like, I will never get that tattooed on me, but it is interesting because it broke, but then three more happened to find their way a week later. Yeah. That, that is a damn sign of being like, we got you. Yeah, I think that's what it was, but I'm sitting there shaking in my boots like- And we've got backup. (laughs) Do I have to get into a bunker? Why do I have three lives? What's coming? (laughs) I'm holding the door closed in 2023. Yeah, that's why I was like, I don't know about this year, okay? This is not even 2023 yet, and you guys have sent me three evil eyes? Be for real. Like, (laughs) you broke one and sent me three more? (laughs) The math ain't mathin'. Yeah, this is scary, (laughs) so- I'm not a calculus professor, but what? Yeah. So, you know, that is a sign to me. You know, everyone's like, what is a sign? This, this, this is here's sign. your sign. <laughs> this is it. It's definitely my ancestors being like, <laughs> let me fly over here. <laughs> um, okay. Well. I'll keep you posted on the evil eye saga. Hopefully, uh, hopefully more don't show up because then I'm really going to be questioning my life. Oh, I'm fully invested in the evil eye saga of 2023. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we are so excited to start season two off with three evil eyes. We're good. We're ready to go. Um, but we hope everyone has an amazing, amazing new year. Um, really kick off 2023 in you know, a fun, happy way. We're bringing in the good energy. We can't wait to be on our YouTube community. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now I have to say that. Um, No, now we got to say smash that like button. Smash that like button now. I hate that. (laughs) I don't even know how to like promote social media channels because I just come on here and want to talk. And then I'm like, oh, I forget to say subscribe to my channel. (laughs) Subscribe to our channel. It'll help us. Um, Don't forget to like rate our podcast in the podcasting store. I can't remember. And comment. <laughs> um, you can also follow us on Instagram. We have a few different, you know, handles there. We have the Sticks and Bones podcast, mm-hmm. which is all podcast. Um, we also have Sticks and Bones, the store, which is all things witchy goods um, from your fave ghost hosts. And of course, you can always find us on TikTok and any other platform. 
but you're yeah. everywhere. We try to be everywhere. We're just two girls trying to manage social media and it's really hard. It's just us two. It's just three evil eyes, two girls, and one, one smash evil podcast. eyes. <laughs> one smash evil eyes, smash the like button, subscribe. We'll see you in the next episode. We all hope you have an amazing new year and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.